not sure my enter key is not working. Uh, yeah, it's working now. So yesterday uh, we have we have covered till the union. Uh, is somebody having any doubts over that? The topics that we have covered yesterday. Okay, I accept that there's no doubts yet. <clears throat> so uh, there are three clauses. The first is union or union all another one is intersect and the last one is accept <coughs> these three clauses require <coughs> the structure of two tables to be similar okay even if the two tables are not similar you can <coughs> select the similar columns in the same sequence and then you can run these three clauses over those two <coughs> tables or structures okay <coughs> now uh, on the last day we have covered till union and union all today i'll show you what intersect does so we have our tables uh, piu lib slash sample <coughs> And another table is PIU LIB TBL1. Is it? Both having the same structure. And the first record that you can see is the same for both the tables. Now, what, what Intersect does is it uh, always fetch and returns the records which are similar in both the tables. Okay. Uh, for example, if we do select star from PIO lib TBL1 and if we write intersect and then select star from uh, select Uh, from PIO LIP slash sample. So if I run, if I hit enter, it will just return the one record which is similar in both the tables. So this is the work uh, of intersect. Okay. Uh, now most of the times what we do is we join tables based on uh, one key field in order to <laughs> gather data or fetch data. Uh, based on the columns of two different tables having different structures or maybe similar. So in case the table structures are similar, you can directly just uh, 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 use this intersect if your key fields are all the columns that are there in that structure. No need for going to join. Then it will just retrieve, you, uh, retrieve and give you the desired result. Okay. <clears throat> the opposite of intersect is accept. It will always fetch you the records which are <coughs> non-similar in both the tables or structures. For example, if we do uh, accept and hit enter, then it will fetch you the record which is <coughs> not similar in both the tables. Okay. Oh, no. So this is uh, the purpose why we use intersect, accept or union or union non. I hope this is clear. This is a very simple thing. Uh, and if anybody has any doubts over it, uh, you can let me know at the end of the session, okay? So the next thing that we'll be covering today <coughs> will be join. Now, <coughs> join are of different types. <laughs> uh, first is theta join. Okay. And the next will be uh, normal. I mean, uh, the one which uses the join keyword, uh, this is called as normal join, or you can say inner join. 
can be also termed as outer join. And another one is left join. And the last one is right join. And this is concerning SQL, uh, the basics SQL. <coughs> and one, another thing which is supplied in IBM IDB2 is the exception join. I'll tell you about this exception join also, okay. So first of all, <clears throat> we'll go in the sequence. First theta, <coughs> and then normal join, and left out, uh, left join, and right join, and then exception join. Now this left join <coughs> could also be termed as left outer join, and right join could also be termed as right outer join. Okay, I'll tell you what is the difference between them. It's very simple to understand. If you get the concepts right, you can do it very easily. Okay. <coughs> So in the first table, as we saw <coughs> in the table, which is uh, TBL1. Yep. Now this TBL1 is having the ID 1, 2, 3. And <coughs> the another table, which is sample, is also having a record with ID value as 1, 2, 3. <coughs> so if we were to fetch <coughs> records, from both the tables having similar ID value, then we could use a simple theta join. Okay, and theta join is always symbolized by a comma sign. So let's start from <coughs> PIOLIP TBL1 alias could be A and then comma <coughs> and then our next file which will be <coughs> PIO LIB slash sample, the alias could be B. And for uh, for assigning the conditions, the filters based on which we need our desired result, what we use here is with theta join, we always give the condition in <coughs> where clause. So you could provide a where, and then your condition will be uh, provided up next, which will be in our cases. <clears throat> a dot id is equal to b dot id and it will <clears throat> if you hit enter you can see that it will fetch records from both the structures at once in a single row okay if you need <clears throat> just the data from <clears throat> table a here what you can do is you can provide the alias a dot star so it will give you the result of table A only, not from table B. Now it may happen that the table structure of TBL1 and sim sample could not be same. Let's say <clears throat> in this case we are having the ID column and name column, but uh, let's assume that the sample table is having another column, <laughs> which is let's say department. Okay, now let's add that alter table and then table name sample if you hit f4 it will give you options what all things that you need any additions to the <coughs> structure of the table or you need to drop any column or add a constraint so likewise now what we'll do is we'll add a field okay we'll take three option and hit enter so it will uh, show us the uh, the fields which will be respect to the configuration or you can say <coughs> the properties of the new column that we'll be adding. So the field name could be department. And the type, let's say the type to be character. Length, we'll assign the length as and uh, yeah, 10. Scale is not required. It's only required when the type is a decimal type. Then you could provide scale, which is 
just the decimal points how much decimal points that you require on the right hand side of the dot okay that's the scale and uh, you can provide data or you should you cannot it's up it's up to you what the requirement <coughs> if the data that needs to be stored in the table is to be as of a ccs id value then you could provide a particular ccs id and then you need to <coughs> provide the value of ccs id for example if we are storing data of ccs id 37 which is normal english language as per ibmi then we can assign this okay otherwise you can left uh, you can leave this one as blanks it's fine it will automatically pick it up from the job the job ccs id and you can hit enter uh, it's not <laughs> taking the ccs id just because the job will be having a ccs id of 66535 and these both of them are not compatible at once if we are changing uh, assigning a ccs id of something different which is not compatible to the jobs ccs id <coughs> so for that case what we'll do is <laughs> We'll leave it as blank as of now. Mm -hmm. That has not been added. F9, F4, and 3. The field name will be department. Type will be. <clears throat> character length of 10 <laughs> and we hit enter now that a new column has been added uh, <laughs> let's assign some value to all the records for sample table We'll hit a page down and we'll fill in the department. Let's say CSE and another page down. <coughs> it could be IT page up. <coughs> okay, we'll hit enter. Take F3 and again enter, and then we'll again go to our interactive session. <clears throat> now that our table sample is having <coughs> another column, which is a department. So, in order in order to fetch these whole records out of this sample table with a matching id number from tbl1 table so in order to do that what we'll do is we'll use that uh, same query where we are using the theta join with a comma and we'll do a b dot star so as to fetch records from this sample table so it will give you the desired result likewise <coughs> we have our inner join or simple join now when we do a inner join what we do is we replace this comma with the join keyword either you can use the join keyword or you can use <coughs> inner join keyword but here the catch is uh, the condition over which the join should be happening should always be contained in within the on keyword not the where condition okay here the on keyword will be replacing the condition of matching where keyword will be used just to filter out data uh, from that subset of values that will be getting out of this matching records of the inner join <clears throat> now if you hit enter we'll get the same result Okay. So this is all about inner join or <coughs> simple join. Uh, yeah. Now comes the left join. 
Now what happens with the left join is every record which is uh, there <coughs> with the table mentioned in the left hand side. Now these are two tables uh, and one is on the left hand side of the join keyword and one is in the right hand side of the join keyword as you can see. So the one, the table which has been <coughs> declared in the left hand side of the join keyword is being considered as the left table and the precedence takes over the left one if we are using a left join. So <coughs> what happens is if we try to do a left join over here, DFT join. So what it will do is it will fetch all the records from the table assigned in the left hand side which is TBL1. So there were, as you have seen that there were two records I believe in TBL1. So all the two record, records will be available in the result. However, only the matching ones from the sample table which is in the right hand side will appear and the non-matching ones will have a null value against them. <clears throat> so if we try to hit enter and see the result, <coughs> you can see all the records from the left hand side of the table which was TBL1 will appear. However, only the matching values from the ID which is our joining condition will be having value from table the right the table which is declared on the right hand side and the <coughs> non-matching will be having a null value. So this is what left out of join does. And the opposite of it is the right join. Opposite in the sense, all the records from the right hand side will appear. However, only the matching records on the table TBL1 will appear and the rest will be assigned a null value. So this is uh, what a left and right join is all about. It's very simple, as you can see. Okay, now that if you want to run, uh, run a sub query over this one, yeah, let's see the result set once again. Okay, here you can see uh, we have the ID as 999 and 478 from the <coughs> right table, which is our sample table. Now, if I try to uh, write uh, include it as a subquery and you just need to fetch the result where the ID value is 999. Then we have two options as of now from the things that we have covered yesterday. The first option is <coughs> we will select uh, a dot star and b dot star. Let's say, but since the <coughs> field names are the same what we'll have to do here is we'll have to assign alias to the field names as well for example a dot id we can term it as uh, id1 and a dot name will be name1 name. similarly we could do for b dot id as id2 and b dot name as name two. The last one will be <coughs> as it is, just because the name of the column is different from the table one. Okay, so the last name could be as it is, which is department. Even if you not provide the alias, it will fetch. Uh, it will get the data from the department column only, as this is a unique column name in both the tables. Now what we'll do is <coughs> we'll write a query above that which will be select star from the below selection of the records where uh, name not name id2 <coughs> where ID2 is equal to 999 and a single code and hit enter. So it will give you the desired result. 
this is how we <coughs> uh, create or construct sub queries means first of all uh, we create the internal the sub data the subset of the data using any query and then over that or on top of that uh, we create another statement of sql which will give us the desired result as needed now another another method for doing the same is <coughs> we'll again select the query this one and we'll use the with clause with t1 as packets and then you can directly write down your own query which we require which is and select i'm sorry tpn star from <coughs> T1 where ID2 is equal to 999. So this will give you the same result. But the with clause is only available with the IBM and DB2 and not with SQL server. So you'll have to take care of that. Different database servers uh, have their own set of keywords in addition uh, for example if you want to fetch the first three records from a table let's say uh, the table sample is having three records so if we need to fetch just the first two records then what we'll do is select star from piulib slash sample and then we'll write sample and then the keyword will be fetch fetch first two rows first and then let's wait fetch I think it was like this, which was the result um, Yeah, it was fetch first, uh, fetch first two rows only. If just the fetch, uh, first row is needed, then you do not need to provide anything here. Just fetch first row only then that will work so this is how we fetch a set of records from the top out of a table in IBM IDB2 however in SQL developer what happens is uh, we can mention the same in the selection only like top two if you do a select top two star from the table then it will give you the same result as fetch first two rows only from IBM and DB2. But this will not be in IBM and DB2 just because it is available in SQL Lite or SQL Developer in those servers. Okay. <clears throat> so the join was pretty much clear, I think. Also, I just need to. Uh, convey to you how to use the RRN of a table. Okay, so let's say uh, we have a sample table here as PIULIB and TBL1. Now, what we'll do is we'll add duplicates here, okay, uh, with ID value as duplicates. We'll go out of the session and we'll do UPDDTA that okay. 
we already have uh, the ideas one two three and four five six what i'll do is i'll add another entry we'll hit f10 and then we can <laughs> enter our values here let's say the third record will be one two three and any name okay the names will be something something and enter next id will be six seven eight and name will be any random value next id will be four five six name will be any random value and the last one will on uh, will be the same one two three and the name could be anything okay <clears throat> and we'll hit f3 we'll come out of it and we'll go to our interactive session again <clears throat> now if we see the result of the tbl1 we can see we have multiple entries over here uh, which is having redundant id numbers in the records <clears throat> now if you need to see RRN of a particular record, what you can do is you'll have to provide alias to a table. The table from which you are trying to press data or get data. So there you'll have to mention RRN of the alias. And then <coughs> the regular A dot star for, for getting the result of the table which is having alias A. So what it will do is it will show you the RRN number of the records as well. Now, in most of the cases, very, uh, very rarely, uh, obviously, what what happens is in production, we there may appear some duplicate data or redundant data over any column, and sometimes the client says that you need to clear up the duplicate data and to retain the unique one. Let's say, okay. For example, assume that these are the entries done manually uh, by a user in the service center or customer services department. And they have entered this ID number with this name and then again somebody came after two days and they have updated the name with the same ID number but they have added the record, haven't updated this already existing one with the same ID number. And then again it happened on the last day that they have also added one more record with the same ID number rather than updating the already existing one. So in that, in that case, <coughs> what we need to do is we need to retain the most latest one, the one which has been uh, entered the most recently into the table. So <coughs> in that case, you will be using the RRN to determine which is the most latest one because you are not having any timestamp or any date fields over here or date time to determine which is the most latest one. So this is a very peculiar case that you may come across uh, in near future. So <clears throat> in this case, what you need to do is you need to select just uh, the most latest one. And in order to do that, what you'll have to do is <clears throat> you can write a select query, select star from <coughs> the same table PIULIB TBL1 PIULIB TBL1 alias SA uh, where RRN of A is equal to select max of RRN of the table alias the same table alias that we'll be using here from P slash TBL P slash TBL one alias will be B and where condition is A dot ID is equal to P dot ID. Now what it will do is uh, from the result set uh, uh, let me with this one and let me show you the result set first with the RRN. So here what we are doing is we are finding values from the same table but uh, joining it with the condition that 
the maximum value of the RRN where the ID number is the same with the same table that will be fetching in our case. So this is doing the same where the max value of the RRN will be fetched from the same table where the matching ID number are there and the RRN will be that max RRN number so that what it will do is it will <coughs> for all the records that we are having for all the ID numbers uh, let's hit F9 and enter <coughs> so for all the records let's say the ID number is 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 7 8 and so for all these three what it will do is it will uh, pick up the max RN number record this one and this one and this one and it will uh, not uh, consider these three the first three just because the RN number is not the maximum one based on the matching record of the ID value okay and that's why we are selecting this one uh, not one two three So it will fetch you uh, origin of the one closing brackets. So it will fetch you all the <coughs> records which are having higher RRN numbers. In order to verify that, what you can do is you can again use that same RRN of A in the selection criteria. Let me do that. of a comma a dot star so as you can see the highest RRN number for the matching IDs have been gathered now if we were to remove redundant data for the old RRN or the old entries that has been made for the same ID number the only thing that you can do is you can provide less than symbol where we have used the equal to symbol to fetch the highest, the latest entries, uh, which will be this. So that uh, any RRN uh, which is lower than the maximum RRN value for the matching ID numbers, those will be fetched. And all you need to do is just replace this select with a delete. Now this will delete all the redundant uh, value of the IDs from the TBL1 table which are the older entries and it will just retain the latest entries with tuning values of the ID number. This was the concept with the RRN in SQL. All right, so I think everything is covered in the SQL part that was needed. Major was the join ones and the where exist. Mm, the unions have been covered, accept, intersect, everything. Anything in particular that you need me to uh, show you? Any concepts? Uh, this is not related to directly SQL, but yeah, I have some uh, some doubts for UniQuery. So mm -hmm. uh, I will later ping you individually for that and we'll discuss on that. Okay. And Pius, I think since everything has been covered relating to the SQL, the basic mm -hmm. ones, uh, means, uh, all these conceptual things are within this concept only, within this uh, th uh, th these particular <laughs> contents that I have uh, covered. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if there is any uh, doubts with anyone relating to SQLs, please let me know. And Pius, you can also cancel tomorrow's session. Noted, sir. Okay. Okay.
sure go ahead then thank you okay thank you everyone bye